Hi, I'm Tracy Cardwell from LP Simonelli and the host of the Buffalo Public Schools program, Making It Happen. Today we have a jam-packed show for you. My first guest is Dr. James Williams, superintendent of the Buffalo Public Schools. Mr. Williams and I, we go to public school number 89, Dr. Lydia T. Wright School, and we look at the new smart boards that's being installed in every Buffalo Public School. My second guest is Dayron Tab. Now you may remember Dayron from a couple of months ago. I interviewed him at one of the ACE Mentoring Program ceremonies. Dayron is an exceptional student. He had a great opportunity out in East Aurora at the Roy Croft campus. You don't want to miss that interview. My last interview is with President Linda Terrell of the Upstate New York Region Minority Purchasing Council. We talk about their upcoming 30th annual convention that's going to take place September 16th and 17th at Adams Mark Hotel. Like I said, we have a jam-packed show. I'm so glad you tuned in today. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm here with Dr. Williams, superintendent of the Buffalo Public Schools. Hello, Dr. Williams. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing very well, Ms. Caldwell. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Okay, listen, how's it going? The schools are, are, are slated to be open in about a week. Are we all ready? We are ready. Okay. Um, the uh, engineers and the custodians are not happy with me <laughs> because summer school <laughs> ended last week. Right. And they have like two weeks to get the schools ready for September. But I was talking to uh, Jeff Lafer today, and he said, we'll be ready. Yeah. So... September the 3rd, 3rd, the doors were open for 37,000 students. Wow, okay, that's pretty exciting. Now, you've been superintendent for the schools for four years now. Mm -hmm. What is your vision? Is it on track? Uh, yes, we, when I came here in 2005, we uh, presented to this community a three-year academic plan. Okay. And this is the end of the third year. And uh, that plan focused on reading and mathematics pre-K-6. Mm -hmm. We also focused on extending the school day and the school year, and we also looked at uh, our assessments and looking at intensive, strategic, and benchmark students. With our intensive students, we moved to a 15 to 1 pupil-teacher ratio to help those students that had challenges. And also, we eliminated social promotion, right. and uh, we have added over 40 AP classes in our high schools. Uh, we exceeded uh, our scholarship monies by 100%, really, we doubled that. So uh, at the end of the third year, we met with staff and said, uh, we've completed the three-year plan now. Mm -hmm. Now we have to develop the plan for the next three years. And uh, starting this September, mm -hmm. we will focus on writing across the curriculum, critical thinking, and the met metacognitive skills. And really, four to twelve through twelve, because we have to do a lot of work with our high school students. We have right. some challenges in our high schools, mm -hmm. so we are on track, and uh, it's a systematic approach we put in to improve the school district. Right. Well, that's great. Now, part of the renovations uh, included the district-wide technology project, mm -hmm. which brings us here today, uh, Lydia T. Wright School, and that includes the smart boards. Mm -hmm. What do you know about the smart boards? How did how did the vision come about? To, to get the smart boards in every classroom in every school? Well, the uh, discussion had started when I came here in 2005, but I knew a little bit about the smart boards. I uh, had a chance to spend about 14 days over in uh, Scotland, the UK, and uh, I went to this technology conference, mm -hmm. and the smart board was on display. Mm -hmm. And uh, this teacher was teaching algebra using the smart board. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, if we could get this into the urban school districts, we can really accelerate learning. Hired to come to Buffalo in 2005. They had a project on the table to put the smart boards in every classroom. But they didn't have a plan on what they were going to do with them. So I slowed the plan down, actually stopped the, pro the, uh, mm -hmm. the progress of the, of the uh, smart board implementation until we focus on instruction. How would this be inclu included in the instruction, teaching and learning process? Mm -hmm. So this September, we will open our schools and uh, we have ordered a smart board for every classroom. That's right. And uh, 
the challenge now, the human resources to put them in every classroom. Right. And I we will open up with about 16 uh, schools ready to go in September. Okay, I do have some statistics. Approximately 805 boards have been installed. And so far the district has purchased 2,160 interactive whiteboard systems. Mm -hmm and 16,960 individual antivotes. And those antivotes are the little tiny computers that your children will use to interact with the whiteboard. That is correct. Okay, that's exciting. And then training for the, te the teachers will be trained. That will coincide, I guess, um, in September? Uh, yes, uh, we took 16 schools mm -hmm. to test everything out. Now, once we get those 16 schools up and running in September, it's gonna be much easier to uh, uh, installed and trained because uh, Fanny Lynn Zanola, who's leading the project mm -hmm. on the staff development side, and Dr. Melvin, mm -hmm. they have the plan. Okay. And also, we went to another school district and looked at how they did it uh, Sarasota, Florida, about okay. 40,000 students. And, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and we learned from them also. Okay. So, you're going to show us a couple of things, right, on the smart board, like what it can do for the, for the students mm -hmm. in the classroom. Well, this is a teaching tool. I yes. want everyone to realize it's not a computer, it's not technology uh, by itself, it's a teaching tool. Right. And teachers will be using this to teach their classes. And also the key part is the feedback from the students. Right. Uh, students can give feedback to the teacher immediately on whether they mastered that particular objective. Okay. So if we look at what it can do, oh, take a nice. picture of your worksheet and your overhead gets a new life. <laughs> so that's the worksheet. Now, I can determine what, this is what the goals and objectives are gonna be for that day, am I correct? Yeah. Uh, use all the materials that came with your curriculum. And that's this. Now we have one of our favorite teachers here that's gonna demonstrate. Now, there you go, using curriculum resources. Another thing you can do, Curriculum management, managing the curriculum. I see, now you put it on that. Immediate assessment and feedback. And this is very crucial because students can give feedback to the teacher and actually see if they mastered that objective. And if they did not, the teacher can go back and reteach. Okay. And then she can look at the percentage. If there are 20 students in the class, 15 got it, five did not, mm -hmm. they go back and reteach. Using manipulatives and tools. And this is tied into the math program and using manipulatives to teach students in mathematics. So this is just gonna be outstanding for the Buffalo Public School students. There's another piece um, that I wanna introduce Rachel to come in and just show us the piece on how the teacher can manage the classroom. I think it's the attendance piece. Yes. Let me step over here. There are basic classroom management. If the teacher wants to come in and be able to take attendance, the child can come in, drag their name, and show that they were there for the day. They can, if they want to use surprise to see which student they're going to call on, they can create something such as this. Instead of pulling a name out of a hat or pulling sticks, they can do something such as that. We talk about the interactive tools. There are actual math tools right on here. If you wanted to, if you need something with dice, you can actually have it randomly roll dice for you. As well as all these tools are interactive on there also. A okay. protractor, you can create links. If you want to open up something right from the internet, you can bring it right up there. And then you can then interact with this website from here. Anything that you wanted to click on at that point, you can do. Okay. And then to, to answer the questions, this I want to just grab one of the active votes. Yes. There are different votes. There are different pages that you can bring up where the students can actually punch in their answer. And they would put in the vote. This would okay. come up. The students would use this to select A, B, C, or D. Okay. And then it would, a graph would come up. We had enough of these going right now right. to show which portion of students selected which answer.